and we don't run to the press and go, this guy's a son of a bitch liar. That's just not appropriate for us to do. Sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, so this video is gonna be a little different. Rather than focusing on a specific issue, I thought it might be fun to go and look at what Reddit was focusing on. So this is not scripted in any way. I haven't read through any of these yet. I just took some of the topics that looked the most interesting and I'm just gonna to respond to them in real time as best as I can. First, YouTube has started testing native picture-in-picture -picture on iOS, submitted by Aaron P613. And if you're not familiar with this, although Apple added the functionality for picture-in-picture -picture on the iPad back with iOS 9 and is bringing it to the iPhone with iOS 14, Google has chosen thus far not to use uh, the native picture-in-picture -picture functionality or to enable it in their own app. And some people believe that's because if you subscribe to YouTube Premium, you can still get audio in the background when you leave the app and they don't wanna sort of make that not valuable anymore. But it looks like right now they're testing actually enabling picture-in-picture -picture for some YouTube videos for some people. And I guess the question is whether or not they are just testing the waters or they're gonna to commit to doing this for everyone. Now, Alpha Phantom says, don't get too excited. I fear they'll paywall this feature only for YouTube Premium. And that's because, yeah, the previous background audio, only being able to listen to it when the phone was off or you were in another app was paywalled. But I don't know if you are actually allowed to paywall off iOS specific features. And my guess, and I guess beyond that, my hope, is that YouTube would choose something else to make a premium feature. I think this is valuable enough that it should be just part of the app. It's how a lot of video apps work. Um, and they would pick something else just to charge extra for. I've done two videos on this already, so I'm not gonna waste your time recapitulating the whole thing, but Haynes GT says, just use the Safari pip. And that's very true. If you really wanna watch picture-in-picture -picture YouTube on the iPad right now, or on iOS 14 for the iPhone right now, use a Safari controller to watch picture-in-picture. -picture. It would just be so much more convenient if YouTube did it natively. Next up, the Epic Games situation, as summarized by Steve Jobs 10 years ago, submitted by Hey You DVD. And this, this video is just so classic Steve Jobs. Take a look. Some people uh, lie. They try to hide it from us. They get very clever about that. Then we find it and we reject it and they run to the press and they tell the press the story about oppression uh, and it gets written up and they get their 15 minutes of fame and we don't run to the press and go, this guy's a son of a bitch liar. That's just not appropriate for us to do. And you know, Steve Jobs was really clear about how he saw the App Store from the very beginning when he first announced it. To him, it was an app console. It was a highly managed computer environment, a computer appliance, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to keep maintaining that you can't really argue about whether it is a console or not, because philosophically, that's how Apple treats it. And the argument should be whether now 10, 11, 12 years later, it should still be that way. Whether the iPhone has advanced so much and become so important to us that it needs to be treated as a general purpose computer. Yavos123 says, can you imagine Steve's response to what's going on if he was still around? It would be epic. And yeah, I mean, Steve Jobs definitely had a way worth words. He would uh, call up reporters and say, I know that you think that I'm a jerk and I think that you're a scumbag and let's try to hash this all out. And the JKHC says, the declaration of war against Flash, that was fun to read. And yeah, absolutely. Steve Jobs was just adamant about not letting Flash, which was Adobe's incredibly popular runtime and cross compiler back then onto the iPhone and onto the iPad. So much so that he demoed it up on stage with the New York Times, with the iPad, with just a broken puzzle piece where the Adobe Flash content would be. Back then, people were angry because Flash was part of the web and Jobs believed it shouldn't be, that the web, uh, you know, and you can say this is ironic or hypocritical on the part of Apple because Apple is so proprietary, but he believed that the web was a place that should be open. And he famously, infamously wrote his thoughts on Flash Letter saying just that. And the person at Adobe who responded to him, who basically flew the flag for Flash at the time was Kevin Lynch who later, uh, now specifically, is vice president of watchOS software at Apple. And we see him on stage every time there's a new version of watchOS or the Apple Watch coming out. JINCMG says, did you see Android phones before Eric Schmidt saw the iPhone during an Apple board meeting? Google was copying RIM and their BlackBerry. And 
uh, that's that's actually true. Um, the very first Android phone was made to be like a Nokia communicator. And just to be clear, Nokia invented everything for phones that would ever need inventing back in 1812. Eric Schmidt was both CEO of Google. They brought him over from Sun Microsystems to sort of be the parent in the room with Sergey and Larry, who are Google's founders. And he was also on the board of directors of Apple. And so he knew about the Android project that they had bought Android and were making it into a phone operating system at Google. And he also knew about Apple's iPhone project. And he never told Apple about Android, that Google was working on a competing phone that would be duplicating as many of their features as they could turn around quickly. And that is sort of where it all exploded. And Steve Jobs certainly wasn't happy about that either. So yeah, uh, seeing Steve Jobs react to Epic would be epic. The App Store Twitter account is promoting the upcoming PUBG mobile update uh, submitted by Minimal Alumino, sorry, Minimal Aluminium Alism. Nailed it. And this is just such an epic burn in every sense of the word. I've done two videos on this already, but Epic decided to put their own uh, mega drop into the iOS and Android app, which was basically payment systems that circumvented the App Store and the Google Play Store. So Apple and Google removed Fortnite from their uh, respective stores. So now Epic is suing them and also Epic is saying they're not gonna put the new season of Fortnite up on iOS or macOS. So uh, those users are gonna just miss out on it and Android users are gonna have to sideload it or get it from the Samsung store or someplace like that. What makes this so interesting is that Apple is using it as an opportunity to promote PUBG's new season. And PUBG is a game very, very similar to Fortnite. So similar that when Epic launched Fortnite, PUBG actually sued them saying that they were ripping off PUBG when they made Fortnite. And what makes it even more interesting is that PUBG uses the Unreal Engine. They are a licensee of Epic's. And that is sort of like Epic doing to PUBG what a lot of people complain that Apple or Amazon or Google or Facebook do to them. And that is seeing what's popular on their platform and then using their power as platform owner to make a version of that to effectively Sherlock uh, that, that feature, that game in this case. And Canary says, do they normally advertise uh, game content, uh, which is you know through the App Store and through the App Store Twitter account? And they absolutely do. Apple has an App Store editorial team and they have an App Store games team specifically, and it's that team's job to write all the content you see in the App Store Today tab, but also do things like social marketing uh, to promote the different games. And this is a super clever way of promoting PUBG, especially if Epic is you know, refusing to update the app to take out the mega drop and just get back on the store and release their new season for iOS players. Venom3386 says, they do when they kick Fortnite off the store. Epic has no issue twisting the knife, so Apple may as well promote their competitor. Yeah, and exactly that. And it's just sort of poetic that the competitor is someone that believed that Epic just ripped off their entire game. Next up, Apple blocks Facebook update that called out 30% App Store tax by Habs Cup Champs. Man, <laughs> do I wish the Habs had all the cups. I think Facebook's complaint here is they wanna be able to bundle up and resell uh, these digital courses through Facebook on iOS and Android. And originally they wanted to point out that 30% of the money on iOS goes to Apple. And the Android screen said that Facebook was giving 100% of the proceeds to the courses. So I would really like to see Apple make exemptions for things like this. I think especially now when everyone is sheltered in place and when it's hard to go out, even though it's digital goods, uh, if it's being done for a purpose in the platform and the aggregator, aren't taking any profit for it, I'd like to see Apple pay that forward, uh, just not take any profit from that either. And I think this is one of those things where Apple is looking at it in terms of, we wanna be able to prove that we're treating every single app the same, but they're already not because games aren't treated the same as streaming video apps, for example, and things like this probably need to be carved out and not treated the same either. Various Businesses says maybe Facebook should also inform users about its data selling practices and misinformation campaigns. I mean, the facts the customers need to know. 
And that's a separate argument because Apple and Facebook are fighting on so many fronts right now. And this one specifically is about iOS 14, which forces disclosure and consent for trackers. So if a company is trying to track you across the web or across apps, they have to ask your permission to do that. And Facebook put up, uh, I think what Ben Thompson called a milk post blog post informing their uh, customers that they were gonna be having to do this because Facebook has both native ads for Facebook and also the sort of ads that they broker for third parties. And they were notifying those third parties of these. And a lot of media outlets chose to make it really dramatic, uh, really like soap opera -y, where Facebook was claiming Apple was destroying the business or whatever. But it wasn't that, but I think Facebook really does have a problem. Winter Charm said they're gonna have to do this on iOS 14, and iOS 14 is gonna make Facebook's data gathering hard enough that they expect revenue to be impacted. And yeah, I would just push back on that and say that if the business model suffers from customers knowing what the business model is, it's not the right business model. And there probably is a version of that business model that would totally work even if you give disclosure and consent to customers. Just point out the benefits and say, are you tired of meaningless internet ads? Are you tired of having all these products shoved on you that don't matter to you? Well, if you enable this, then we will do everything we can to give you the best deals, the most relevant ads, to make the experience of getting the ads even better than having to go search out on Google what you want. I think there's a whole, like if I was doing product marketing at Facebook, there is a whole better product that I would try to build around all of this. Retroity, Retroity says, so if small app that's not Facebook did this and that would be fine with you because it seems like the issue is just Facebook. And I think that's true. I think because people hate Facebook, uh, probably more people hate Facebook in the Apple community than hate Apple. Uh, it's sort of like, yeah, but it's, it's fine for Facebook. And I don't think that's true. I don't think that Apple should do this with the Facebook um, app and I don't think they should do it with any app. I think if someone's doing something to benefit small creators, small businesses, and they're not taking any profit from it, I don't think Apple should take profit from it either, whether it's Facebook or anybody. So next, uh, John Prosser, iPhone 12, here you go, real hands-on video, 120 hertz, LiDAR, camera settings, more exclusive leak, submitted by Dragonslayer91. And this is about all the back and forth over will they or won't they include 120 hertz uh, refresh rate on the iPhone 12 Pro. And John Prosser and uh, Max Weinbach, for that matter, have what they claim are screenshots of the settings page that shows the toggles for this on verification, on testing units. So other people have claimed that these are obviously or could be faked. Uh, Telos of Tech did a whole video on it. People can just build these interfaces in Xcode, uh, move them over to the device and run them. And because the device was filmed even, it wasn't just the static screenshots, but because the device was filmed even in the dark with what they said was a case on it, which is really common. Typically Apple hides new designs by putting the phones in cases so that if anybody sees them while they're being tested, they don't really know that it's a new design, but that the case in the black room uh, and they like zap rooted down on the size of the notch and the radius of the curves. But the point is you, you can never really tell with these kinds of things because you do have people with uh, good uh, leaking track records and John Prosser has one, especially for the dates of when products and events and things are gonna happen. And the Apple track website, which is basically like Tierzu for um, leakers has Coinex now at 95%, the information at 90%. Love to Dream at 89%, Mark Gurman at 86.7%, On Leaks at 78.6%, uh, John Prosser at 77.8%, uh, The Wall Street Journal at 76.7%, uh, Guomingji at 76.4%, 9to5Mac at 75.1%, and Mako Takara at 67.4%. That's their top 10, all the way from the S tier of uh, Coinex on down. But you also have a bunch of people who uh, go out of their way to try to burn leakers. And we saw that recently with the air power situation. So I guess it just comes down to one, whether you trust the leaker or not, and two, whether you think it's something that Apple would do. Would Apple not wait an extra year uh, to get better display technology? Now people love to say LTPO as if that solves everything, or even something like micro LED, which everyone is working on because it provides the benefits of OLED without all of the drawbacks. You know, whether they can solve it technologically rather than have to sort of half-ass it out. My hope is that we'll get it because as a nerd, I really want that 120 Hertz uh, display refresh rate for the scrolling, sure, but 
for the accurate 24 frames per second rendering of video, you know, of movies on the devices. I make all of these videos in 24 frames per second, but I've learned to be really conservative when it comes to how Apple pushes out display technologies and they tend to one, prioritize battery savings. I don't think they added tons of capacity to the iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max just to walk it back now for a niche feature that most people won't even know exist, but also they like really good implementations. They don't believe in dumping management of a device onto a user. They will give you toggles like to turn off ProMotion or turn it back on, but the ProMotion itself is handled completely by the system. No one has to micromanage it. And I don't think market pressure is high enough for them to change that behavior now, but we'll see come October. And who knows, maybe Apple could fix all of this with artificial intelligence because that's just how everything is working now. Take Brilliant's new neural networks course. You can learn how to wire up 50 neurons and build a network that's capable of classifying handwritten digits. Basically the foundation for how Scribble works on the Apple Watch and iPad today. But really like everything. And Brilliant's a website and app with over 60 interactive courses in math, science and computer science, logic and deduction, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, cryptocurrency, and so much more. It's based on problem solving and active learning. It's about seeing concepts visually and interacting with them and then answering questions that get you to think. The courses are laid out like a story and broken down into pieces so that you can tackle them a little bit at a time. There are no tests, no grades. Just pick a course based on what you're interested in and get started. And if you make a mistake, who cares? Just check out the explanations to find out more. Go to brilliant.org slash Rene Ritchie and sign up for free. Just click on the link in the description or go to brilliant.org slash Rene Ritchie and the first 200 of you can also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscription. And clicking on that link really helps out this channel. For much more on the iPhone 12, and I mean way more, like deep dives on every rumor and how they all pan out and what you can believe and what you can't believe, just check out my iPhone 12 playlist above. Just click on that link, check out the videos, and I'll see you there.